Christmas. That is our new series, and I'm really excited to teach it. If this is your very first time, my name is Chadi. Uh, my husband and I are the lead pastors of Hope St. Pete, and we are so thankful that you chose Hope today. And so we're jumping into a brand new series called, um, am I straight? I am straight. <clears throat> okay, sorry. My OCD of like wanting to wander, and then I saw the stickers. Forget about it. We're just going to jump back in. Series synopsis. Uh, today we're talking about uh, the real gifts of Christmas. It's an Advent series. Uh, as a church, we're officially in the Advent season. Advent is a fancy, fancy traditional church word meaning coming into and as a church we want to honor celebrate Jesus coming into our world as a newborn baby um, does anybody else um, this is really non-pastorly or Christ-like as I started this but I want you to know that every time I say newborn baby I think of Will Ferrell praying yeah. to baby Jesus <laughs> and it's not right it's just where I'm at right now. Uh, it is through baby Jesus that we receive the real gifts of Christmas, hope, peace, love, and joy. And so I promise not to say baby Jesus too many times in my sermon so it doesn't throw you off your groove. But I want you to know it has thrown me off mine. So <laughs> before we jump in, um, I am going to pray. Um, and uh, out, of, out of all the gifts, in case somebody's taking notes and they want to know what we're talking about today, we're talking about the gift of hope. We're going to lock right into the gift of hope um, this should be an easy topic as our church is called Hope, but I found it very difficult to uh, navigate this week. So good luck, everybody else. All right, so I'm going to pray because I need Jesus to walk back into the room. And um, yeah, Lord, help, please. Uh, I love you. You're my favorite. Thank you for being the hope of the world. Thank you for coming and bringing hope. Thank you, Lord, for being all the, all the anchors that I need, Lord God, in what has felt like a crazy sea this week. Lord, thank you. You are the anchor to my soul. Lord, I just pray that this revelation wouldn't be my revelation, Lord, but yours. I pray, Father God, that the cross would be bigger, Lord, as uh, in the hearts of those that are listening, Father God. Uh, Jesus, that they would get a greater revelation of who you are, Lord, during these next 30 minutes. Lord, I pray, Father God, that if anyone has lost hope, that in these next few minutes, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would invade their minds and their hearts with your hope today. Lord, you're ex just living hope, hope that revives us. Lord, thank you for all that you continue to do. We love you. And in Jesus' mighty name I pray, we all say, amen. Hope, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing. That's how uh, Google calls hope. Uh, hope in the kingdom's different, though. Biblical hope means trusting in God's character and choosing hope uh, despite our circumstances. I think that if we base our hope off of circumstances, there will be no hope because the world has lost its mind. I don't know if you guys ever go outside and go, you can come back now, Jesus, because I do it at least twice a week. Twice a week, I'm waiting for those trumpets. Sound, Jesus, this would be great, Lord. If you could, the Jaguars are playing the Bengals tonight, Lord. If you'd like to come right before that, that would be great, Jesus. You know, like, I just, I feel like my heart's going to be hurt around 8.15 this evening. Like, I just, I'm, I, I'm asking for your hope, Lord, and things that may not matter. But what's good about God is that biblical hope. It's so much bigger than our circumstances. It's so much bigger than the things that we need hope for. And so, uh, I, I love that I get to talk about this today because uh, when we started to talk about what to call the church, uh, about a year ago, we did a major rebrand of our church. We were just in a new season, and we're like, what are we going to call our church? And Pastor Brian and Pastor Jen and Pastor Esteban and I, we were, we were doing a walkabout, and uh, there was a, a, a church that is a lot older, and uh, Pastor Brian said, look, they're hope dealers. And I went, oh, that's cool. I want, I want to be a I look, I want to be a hope dealer. And I was like, what would happen if we called ourselves Hope St. Pete? And the Lord took me to a verse as I was processing it, praying it, before I like tried to sell it to the rest of the team. I, it said, may the God of hope fill you with all joy. It's in Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 15, 13. It is our actual church verse. And what's so good about the word hope in this verse is it's, it's not just like I, really, like, I really hope, I anticipate, like this is really gonna work out. No, it's, it's a living hope. In Greek, it means el peace. It's a living hope. It's a hope that is alive. It is the hope that is Jesus. And so as we talk about hope today, I want you to know that hope is alive. Hope is here. Hope wants to move on your behalf. And I, I, we're going to talk a little bit about what it looks like to have hope work on 
your behalf in a crazy situation that seems impossible. Has anyone ever needed hope to move on their behalf in a crazy situation? Me, all day, every day. Thank you for the hand everybody. Yes. Okay. I don't feel alone. So we're going to read a story. You guys have heard this story a million times. If you've been in church for one day, you've heard this story. It's a story of Mary, a young girl who one day walks in on a strange man who's an angel and he's like, Hey girl. And no, that's not what happened. And so <laughs> that's, I, this is a weird story for me. It's going to get weird over the next five minutes. Just let me work through it. It's weird. It's a weird story. She's a teenager. She's a teenager who is engaged to be married. They say that Joseph um, had to be like kind of a young guy in his 20s because that trek that they made to Bethlehem that we all know, that we talk about, uh, had to have been done by a young guy. So that's what I was reading when I was doing some research. He's a young guy. He's maybe in his 20s. She's like 14, 15 years old. Ooh. And so back in the day, that was normal, not weird. And so we're going we're gonna to start with Luke 1, 26 uh, through 30. I'm going to read right through it first. And, um, and then I'm going to break down how I felt like the Lord gave it to me. Also, I say this a lot lately, but I want to say it again. This is my revelation that I felt like the Lord gave me. Please, during the week, now that we're doing uh, this Bible uh, Advent, Bible project, Bible reading plan together, go home. Read it with your kids this week. See what God tells you. Because the reality is that we all have a different revelation that God could give us and give our families for this season. But this is what I feel is the revelation for our church and for our house as well. Okay, here we go. Luke 126 uh, through 38. I'm going to read it out of the ESV for the Bible nerds that want to know and the guy online who wants to say something mean. Here we go. In, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> There's always one. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man uh, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. Say David. That's going to be important later. Um, the virgin's name was Mary. Say virgin. That's going to be important later. Why they had to call her that? Why couldn't they just say like a young girl? Like they had to be like the Virgin Mary. That's weird. And he came to her and said, greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. I mean, because it's a strange man in her house. That's not in the Bible. That's me reading. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your, womb, in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Mm. He will be great <laughs> and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, what? No, she he, he shut my mic out for that one. He was going to do that. The Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? Good question. Great question, Mary. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and, and the power of the, uh, the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born and will be called holy, the Son of God. Behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is in the sixth month with her, um, with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Say, for nothing. Oh, it's so good. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I love this story. It makes me really happy to be able to teach on this story because there are some things that popped out to me as I was reading it for the umpteenth time of my life. At 42 years old, I've seen this message on The Chosen. I've seen it, people take creative liberties with it. I've seen it on front yards of people. Um, I've seen very traditional churches do plays about it. Um, you know, I've seen the felt board version of it. I've seen all the versions of this story. And the thing that sticks out to me as he said, and he came to her and said, greetings, O favor one, the Lord is with you. Okay, here's a little context. There is a messianic prophecy. There is a, a Jewish prophecy that everybody would have known at that point. Uh, there's two verses I want you to see just for a little context. One is in Isaiah and one is in 2 Samuel. Uh, the first one is in Isaiah 7:14. It references a virgin birth, which would have been Mary. Then the second one is in 2 Samuel 7, 12 through 13. It talks about the lineage of David, which is Joseph. And so when Mary's hearing this, uh, you're about to have a baby. He is going to be the son of God. What she asks 
is not like, um, so is he going to be like the lineage of David? Like, I'm a virgin. Like, okay, like she, it was like she knew, oh, okay, I already know what's happening here. I think it's so incredibly amazing that what she asked, what he said, so the Lord, okay, what she asked only had to do with like very small details. Like she was ready to go. It's very bizarre to me that that's what she was navigating. I don't know, I read it and it kind of threw me for a loop, okay? And so the very first thing I wanted to, to, to st- before I jump into how weird it was that she said that, I wanted you to know that the gift of hope is with you and has a plan. She would have known that messianic prophecy. She would have known, oh wait, (laughs) I'm a virgin. I see what you did there, Jesus. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I got you, Yahweh. I see what you're doing here. I'm a virgin, weird. Oh my God, I saw that totally worked out. I'm the prophecy thing, it's happening. Joseph, totally from the line of David. Oh my God, it's, it's happening. You ever seen like the office where they're like the fire and they're like, it's happening. Oh, and there's cuss words, but don't worry about that part. And he's like, it's happening. It's ha-. That's what I see in my mind. Mary, she's a little freaked out, but she looks like the guy from the office. And he's like, it's happening. It's finally happening. Like the messianic prophecy is finally happening, right? And so I just want you to know what I think Mary knew in that moment. That Yahweh, God is with me and he has a plan. I love there's a verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. It's the worst. <laughs> it's on like every sign in Hobby Lobby. It's probably in your house. It's in mine. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. That's what I hear in my head when I read it. Plans for welfare, peace, and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I love that verse. Isn't it amazing? Guys, the whole chapter of 29 is so sad bear. It's so sad. He's literally talking to the people in Babylon that have been like exiled and it's so sad. It's so absolutely crazy and chaotic and yet there is a plan for you, says the Lord. And I think that Mary, in that moment, she was like, you know what? He just said God is with me and you know what I do know? That God has a plan. And this seems chaotic, this seems impossible, but she is looking at the whole situation and she says, hope has found me, hope is with me, and hope has a plan. I don't know what you're going through this week. I don't know what, if you're a fan of Christmas or if you're not a fan of Christmas. I am not a fan of Christmas. I grew up with a mother whose entire your home is now decked out with Christmas. Everything about my, my, my mom's house right now, from the toilet paper to the bedspreads, is Christmas. That woman is like a Hallmark channel and makes Hallmark look like bad budget. Like, and, I, I, and so for me, it was like, I can't keep up with this. And so I put up like a little 80s tree in my house right now. I don't feel the hope my mom feels about Christmas. Maybe it's because it's our second Christmas away from them. I don't know, probably, because I don't know what just happened. (laughs) But I'm here to tell you today, some of us have a greater feeling of hope. Some of us are going to navigate the season with a little less hope, but hope is still here. And hope still has a plan for you and has a plan for your future, for peace, love, to reign supreme in every bit of your life. You following? Awesome. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And I believe that she knew that in that very moment. And that's why she responded with how she responded. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? So if uh, hope, the gift of hope is with you plan. The second thing is uh, the gift of hope isn't focused on um, like minuscule details. Find it. I wrote it down here that um, the gift of hope isn't focused on details. The gift of hope is focused on the mission. That's weird to say, right? Like I need details in order to do the mission. Do you? Do you? I think we all do. I think we just want details from the Lord and the Lord's like, I just need you to follow. Like obedience is hard. You know what I mean? And uh, sometimes when Jesus, the only thing he's ever asked us to do is say, is follow him. He said, follow me, right? But I think sometimes we want details. Like, I need to know what outfit I'm going to take. Does anybody else do that? Are you, are you guys packers like that? I'm, I'm like that kind of traveler, Pastor Jen. I need to know, Alexa, what is the weather going to be like for the next 10 days? I'm going for 24 hours. What is the weather going to be like? So I need to know what it's going to be like. So I can take the right shoes, the right socks. Um, also, will I need a for this experience? 
excursion. Do I need a jacket for this excursion, Jesus? I need to know absolutely everything before I go. Mary did not need to know that. She had already knew. Wait, okay, virgin. Okay, we see what you're doing. Honestly, I just need to know technically how we're going to do that. I'm good with all the other stuff. Are you crazy? A angel shows up in my house talking about you're going to carry the, the hope of the world? I'd have been like, me, Jesus? Me? <laughs> Let me tell you what I just said to so-and-so five minutes ago. You should have seen what I wrote on the internet. Like, you do not want me, Jesus. She didn't even say that. She wasn't like, God, that's not, I'm not the right person for the job. She said, cool, logistically, how are we going to do that? How many times has God called you to do something or you're in a season right now where he's asking you to step into something and instead of you saying, all right, cool, logistically, where do you want me to turn? Left, right, get in the car. She was already in the car. The cool thing about like Hebrew words and what I've learned in my study and in my, is like Hebrew words are like action words. So I'll give an example. When Abraham heard God or when Moses heard God, the Hebrew word is not like I heard him and you were like, Kaka, thank you. It was like he heard him and he was already working. He was already moving. He was already shifting. She's like, just give me the logistics. I'm ready to go. I'm telling you, hope moves you forward and it puts you like you're ready to go. Some of you need to realize that hope is alive in you and wants to move on your behalf and you are stationary and you do not want to move because you're like, I don't feel hope. Mm. Hope is a person. Hope is Jesus. And Jesus wants to move on your behalf. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And I love that we can look at the life of Mary right now and say, you know what, God? I don't need to know how I'm going to get there. God, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent this month, Lord, but I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep being a good steward of my time. I'm going to keep being a good steward of my people, God, and I know that you're going to bless me because that's what you do. She knew the God that she served. She would have been in the synagogue. She would have heard everything about the King of kings and the Lord of lords that would be coming to save the world. She was living under Roman oppression. This was like, what? He's coming? Let's go. Now, I'm not saying that she would have known like that's what was going to happen because, you know, he didn't do that. But it would have been exciting. Nonetheless, you know how your kids are like really hyped up about like Santa Claus? Right? That's like a thing. I remember. I remember the day that, the, that we found all the presents and we were like, wait a second. Why are all the presents in mom's closet? Are we going to open them? No. That's not the point. Point is, it's like, it kind of, it kind of, it like, it kind of deflated the sense of hope because we got too many details and we were too young and too immature to understand them. I feel like God sometimes keeps the details away from us because it's not that he doesn't love us. He just doesn't want to scare us like a crazy angel. I don't want a crazy angel show up at my house. I would be like, I'm calling 911 or Jeremiah. Somebody's getting, <laughs> somebody's getting tased today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, sir, I understand that you were, I, like sometimes, sometimes, Pastor Jen, blue eyes, sometimes when I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord, I'm in my office in the morning. I, I say things like, it's dumb. I don't really mean it, but I'm going to look at you while I say this. Lord, if you just want to show up in my house, or I ain't going to be mad. Lord, if you just want to send an angel, Jesus, just to confirm this, that would be so cool. And, so, and I hear the Holy Spirit going, you don't want that. You don't want that. Because knowing me, he'd send that weird Daniel angel with like the wings and the eyes. And I'd be like, oh, stranger things. You know, I don't want that. I don't want that. But God wants to, for you to understand that he wants to send hope into your homes, into our city into our jobs, into our families, into our marriages. And the only way that that happens is when you respond to impossible, scary things rooted in the scriptures and go, I don't need the details, Jesus. I'm in the car already. Clink, clink. I've turned on the air conditioning. Where are you at? <laughs> Pastor Esteban does that for me. He'll jump in the car and he'll turn the air conditioning on because I'm usually the last one out the door. And so now he's got a fun lock on our door that's like beep, boop, beep. And so he's like, he'll leave me in the house, getting everything. He will have packed the car. He's got the air conditioning and he's just waiting for me. And that's how I feel like how Mary was. She's like, cool, cool. If we could just work through that weird, one, one weird situation, I'm going to be in the car. Some of you just need to get in the car today. I don't know what that car looks like. I don't know what that uh, place of faith looks like for you. But I'll tell you that hope's already in the car waiting. Amen. Her response tells me that her being pregnant with Emmanuel, the Messiah, wasn't the weird part. <laughs> the process of her getting pregnant was. Guys, life is weird. Mm, people are weird. 
It's usually people, though. And sometimes we just got to deal with weird. But how great is it that nothing is impossible with God? And so then we go on. And so he explains it. He says, cool, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, overshadow you, and therefore the child will be born. It's awesome. He goes through the whole thing. Because he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. I love, I love that he does give her details, and then he ends it with nothing is impossible with God. Don't freak out. I'm, I'm going to give you some details, and it's going to feel impossible. But God, nothing, nothing, nothing. And she says, like a gangster, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I like that he departed after she said, hmm, cool, let's go. I bet he was like, that, that went so much. Hey, Michael, so I just saw the virgin chick that won that Jesus. Okay, so like, she didn't freak out. I mean, she was a little scared because you know my muscles, but like, she was like, all right. Like, I just wonder. I wonder if angels have those conversations. Like, this was going to be weird. It wasn't weird. And so here she is. She says, yeah, I got it. Hope, the gift of hope. I'm going to reread them because I, I like, I like uh, recaps. Is with you and has a plan. The gift of hope isn't focused on many, it's not majoring on the minors. Have you ever heard that? Like, it's not majoring on the little tiny details that don't matter. Instead, the gift of hope sparks obedience. Hope. I'm going to run through these verses because I want you to hear it. Hope. I love Hebrews 6.19. This hope we have is an anchor for our soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence uh, behind the veil. Man, how happy are you that the hope of God, the hope that has a plan and a future, the hope that is keeping some doors closed because we really don't want to see what's behind door number three is the hope that is anchoring our soul. I don't know about you guys, hyped on Mountain Dew about it. The second thing I love so much about it, it says, Hebrews 11, one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Aren't you good, Aren't, don't you feel like so good to know that all you gotta do is have a little faith? Like that's real easy. Chadi, faith is hard. Nah, man, not when you serve a God that is the miracle working God. Not when you serve a God where nothing is impossible with God. Doesn't it feel good to know that the gift of hope is ready and waiting at any point to jump in. Uh, I put this here because I, I knew there was going to be some, somebody sitting here that's like, I'm just really logical, and I just really need sometimes for God to like just really just break it down for me and explain things to me a little bit better. Every one of us has done it. Not in that voice, but every one of us has done it. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways, my, are my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We serve a very big God. We serve a God who uh, said, let there be light, and light has not stopped. We serve a God that created the world in such a beautiful, epic way, people are still fighting over how they did it. And I just want you to know that that same God loves you. Chadi, we know that. That's why we're here. No, I think sometimes you just need the reminder. God talks to me in movies. I don't know if you've caught that already with the three movie comfort things I've said already. There's a movie I love very much. Robin Williams was my favorite actor of all time. And there's a movie called Goodwill Hunting. And uh, in the movie, uh, the main character is really struggling. And he just walks up to him and he says, It's not your fault. And the kid starts crying. And he's like, dude, don't talk to me. He's like, no, I just want you to know it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Sometimes we need to be reminded that God is with us. Hope is with us. He loves you. The bad stuff that's going on in the world, the things that, the, that have happened in your past or in your present or in your future, it's not your fault. God has a plan. Bad things happen to good people. Sin came into the world and screwed it up. So guess what? From here to eternity, we're going to have to navigate bad things happening to good people. There's people in our church right now that are having to navigate some stuff that I don't know how to navigate. I don't know how to navigate with them. We have a friend in the ICU, a friend of our church, a member of our church in the ICU right now. Can't breathe on her own. 
They had the incubator last night. We're open to God that he does an incredible miracle in her life. Bad things happen to good people. But nothing is impossible with God. He still has a plan and a purpose in the midst of that chaotic situation. And even though we need details, what I need more than details is his presence. The final thing, when she said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to the word. The gift of hope sparks obedience. Obedience isn't easy. If it was, it wouldn't be called obedience. I'll say it again. Obedience isn't easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't have to tell our kids 42 times, pick up your shoes, pick up your shoes, put your shoes on, put your socks, no, take your shoes off, put your socks on. (laughs) Does anyone feel seen right now? (laughs) And I remember being a kid and like, my mom having to tell me 42 times. 42 times. And then there was that one time I told her to shut up. Let's not talk about it. I, I blacked out on what happened after that. My mom's about 5'2", and she talks like this. It's amazing. I love Christmas. I love it. It's amazing. I don't talk like that. That's my mom. I told her to shut up one time. I was 17. I must have forgot. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. She wanted Christmas. Christmas came for me that day. I don't know. I, hope did not spark obedience in me that day. I don't know what happened. But you know what? Obedience sparked by hope is easy. It's easy to follow Jesus when you're filled with his hope. It's easy to follow Jesus when you understand that it's really Jesus is all you need. It's easy. It's easy. And so we find Mary in Luke 1, 46 through 55, singing a song. And what's so beautiful, I'm going to read it to you guys, it's going to be on the Sky Bible behind me, is that she actually is singing about things that is in Scripture, Singing about things that she knows already happened in scripture. She's singing those things before Jesus was even born. In the infancy of the situation, she's already thanking God for his goodness. Some of you need to remind yourself, you are the same God that helped me in my marriage. You are the same God that healed my child when I didn't know what I was going to do. You are the same God that brought forth provision when I didn't know what I was going to do. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are the same God. And so we find Mary in Luke 1, 46 through 55, and Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now, on all generations, will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has uh, scattered those who are proud in, in their inmost thoughts. He is brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble he has filled the hungry with good things but has sent the rich away empty he has helped his servant Israel remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever just as he promised he is a yes and amen God he has a yes he's not like us hope our hope is not faithful God's hope is faithful We tend to be faithful if our circumstances are good. God's faithful regardless. When I was a kid, all I ever wanted was a pair of Jordans. They were the retro sixes. It was 1991. And my little 10-year-old behind wanted these Jordans. We were super poor. So there was no way. I was going to get these Jordans. We were the type of family that you got one Christmas present a year. <laughs> and um, my mom said, I'm going to get you those Jordans. <laughs> and every week for three months, she would get paid every two weeks. And she'd walk me to Foot Locker. She would hold my hand. <laughs> Had to be Justice's age. <laughs> and we would just walk and we would just walk and she would give $20. They were $125, I'll never forget it because I knew, I counted how many weeks it would take for us to get those shoes. <laughs> Man, every week we would walk, she'd, she'd just tell me about the goodness of God. And God, isn't this good that we get to spend time together? And 
Like, look what God's gonna do. You're gonna get these shoes for Christmas. Are you excited? What are you gonna do when you wear them? Mom, I'm gonna play basketball. I'm gonna never take these shoes off. I'm gonna be so good. I'm gonna wear them for every basketball season. And I remember when she finally got them and she wrapped them for me. And I was watching it for like two weeks under the tree. And I was like, oh my God, I know what those are. I know what those are. And on Christmas day, I ran over it. It had to be like four in the morning. I was like, please let us open a present. And I opened them. And it was like, it was like rays of light when you opened them. I put them on and I was running around in these shoes. And I was just like, oh my God, I didn't take those shoes off for three years. I wore them for every basketball season. She'd be like, you want a new pair of shoes? Nope. I would clean them. I would take care of them. A couple years ago, I bought the special edition versions of those for my husband. They sit in the closet. He wears them periodically. How far we've come from the day that I just wished I could have them. And now I get to gift them on a random Christmas. I'll never forget the sacrifice my mom gave me for those shoes. And in seventh grade, they got stolen out of my locker and I beat up the kid that stole them. But that's a different story for a different day. I never got them back. I, when I tell you I cried like a little kid sitting in that locker room when I realized they were gone. And some kid was like, dude, they're just shoes. It wasn't just shoes. It was a sacrifice. It says in the word of God, when it talks about the armor of God, that we are to wear the good, that was it, the shoes of peace. Those that go and spread the good news, they wear the shoes of peace. And some of us, every morning, we get up and we forget that hope sacrificed so we could wear those shoes. Sometimes we get up in the morning, we won't even wear them. We just toss our peace aside. We toss what hope has done for us. We toss it aside. We forget to be obedient. We forget to be grateful. We forget to lift our hands and worship because I'm just, you know, I don't really want to do that today. I forgot to eat my food. My stomach's a little rumbly. Like, he, like he's not really worthy of our worship. But he is so incredibly worthy. And I want to encourage you today to live every day in remembrance of the sacrifice that God did so that you could walk out this life with those shoes. Hope came to earth in an impossible situation, in an impossible time, when everything you think could have gone bad, went bad, and he did it for us. And this is the season to reflect on that. But I wanna challenge us, 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 us in the room, us hope dealers, to live this every day, to get up in the morning and say, thank you, hope. Thank you, hope, for all that you continue to do. God, may the God of hope fill me with joy and peace that I trust in him, so that you, God, will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, because that's who we are. That's who we are as hope, St. Pete. That's who we are as hope dealers. And as we continue this series over the next couple weeks, as we talk about peace next week, as we talk about joy the following week, as we talk about love, that you would be here every Sunday. Oh, uh, um, I have things to do. I leave in a couple weeks. Eckerd girlies, I'm not gonna do. I know that you don't deal with your schedule. Everybody else, I'm talking to you. Not only that you would show up in this seat, but you would bring somebody because everybody needs hope. Everybody needs peace. Everybody needs love. This is the season where people go into the most of darkest of spaces. Don't just be a hope dealer by name, be a hope dealer by your actions. So I'm gonna pray for you and then I'm gonna close because I feel like some of you are like, stop yelling at me. And I'm just gonna pray a quick prayer that I ask you to repeat after me because we do have people watch online and I don't know who 
in the room today that might need to pray this prayer. So if we could just pray it together. And it's a, a small prayer for those that might want to engage hope. We say a lot of language internally. We want to discover hope. We want to connect to hope. We want to engage hope. And we know there's people here today that need to discover it for themselves. So if you're here and you don't know this Jesus that came into the world, or if you're watching online in six months and you don't know this Jesus I'm talking about, I just want you to know that hope has a plan and a purpose for you. Hope wants to spark you over the ends and hope wants you to get out of the hustle and bustle of the details. And Jesus is asking you today to follow me. Say, dear Jesus, I wanna be a hope dealer. I believe you came to the world and you died for me and you rose on the third day. Teach me how to follow you well. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.